Hi, I'm Tom Gustafson, Computer Information Systems Instructor at Lake Superior College in Duluth, Minnesota. Welcome to this series of videos on using Windows 7 virtual hard disks. If you want more information about our online AAS degree in Network Administration, see the webpage on your screen, www.lsc.edu. We're going to be talking about virtual hard disks in these videos, so let's define what is a virtual hard disk. It's really a file format. A virtual hard disk is a file and this file format can host native file systems and support standard disk operations. So it's a file that acts like a disk. These virtual hard disk files are used by virtualization applications like Hyper-V, Virtual Server, and Virtual PC. When you have a virtual machine that virtual machine fools the operating system into thinking that it's working with hardware that is actually virtualized. And so your operating system thinks it's writing to a hard disk and really those operations are being applied to a file that mimics a hard disk. So the VHD file format is used um, by these virtualization solutions, but also it's used by some backup solutions like Windows Server Backup. A VHD is a um, great way to uh, make a system portable. You can write a disk to it essentially and then copy that VHD file somewhere, use it somewhere else, or just back it up. Another very important thing about virtual hard disks is that Windows Boot Manager can be configured to boot from a virtual hard disk. This is only true with the Enterprise and Ultimate editions. You can boot those, but yes, you can boot um, Windows 7 from a virtual hard disk, and we're going to demonstrate that in these videos. Now, a VHD is different than a .wim file, and if you look at the separate video series that I've put out on um, imaging Windows 7, you'll see that uh, we've created WIM files when we created an image of a hard drive. But an image cannot be um, written to by standard Windows operations. It can, an image can't be treated like a hard drive. That's the really flexible thing about virtual hard drives is you can attach it to your computer and then treat it like a hard drive. You can format it, write to it, read from it, delete from it, and so forth, just like you would any other hard drive. Virtual hard drives also don't require a virtualized environment. They got their start with Hyper-V and other um, solutions like Virtual PC, and that's how they got their start was being a virtual hard disk for a virtual machine. But now this functionality is built right into Windows 7, and you can use a virtual hard disk from a physical machine. Also, we will see in our videos that you can image a virtual hard drive. If you have ImageX from the Windows Automated Installation Kit and a .wim file, a Windows image, you can apply that image to a virtual hard drive, and we will demonstrate that in this series. We'll be using these resources for working with virtual hard disks. The Windows 7 Enterprise Evaluation, which is um, free at the website you see on your screen, you can download it. It's a 90-day trial, and you can rearm it up to 180 days to play around with Windows 7 Enterprise, which has all the features of Windows 7. Enterprise and Ultimate include all features. We will also be using the Windows Automated Installation Kit, another free download from Microsoft at microsoft.com slash downloads. Just search for WAIK. Um, this is a very large file, 1.7 gigabytes or so. You can use the ISO directly in a virtual machine or burn it to a DVD and install it on your system. Okay, let's talk about the big picture here. What are the steps to boot from a virtual hard disk? The first one we're going to see is we have to create that virtual hard disk. And there are two ways to do it. You can do it under with uh, disk management, which um, is a graphical tool and probably the simplest way to do it. Or you can use the command line tool disk part, which we will use in this video because it's more fun, it's scriptable, and the command line is a good thing to know how to use. So that's how you create a virtual hard drive. And then you're going to want to partition and format that virtual hard drive. 
and uh, we will do that um, again using disk part you could do it with disk management if you wanted to we're going to use the Windows automated installation kit utility called ImageX then to take a Windows image and apply it to the virtual hard drive we're just going to take take the install.wim file right off the Windows 7 installation DVD and install that apply that to the virtual hard drive if you want to once your virtual hard drive has an image applied to it you can detach it and you can copy that VHD file somewhere else if you want to use it on other computers now that's an optional step and we're not actually going to do that but you should be aware that that's an option then you can add a boot entry for the virtual hard drive to your boot configuration data on your system when you reboot then that virtual hard drive and its operating system become a boot option for you so those are great things to know about and uh, we're going to walk through each of them one step at a time so here are the steps for creating a virtual hard disk using the disk part utility which is a command line utility in Windows 7 we're going to first of all uh, run the create vdisk command and here we're providing for this command the uh, path to the virtual hard disk file and they have a .vhd extension right here you you can choose the name of the file you can choose the name of the directory it's stored in and you can choose what disk you store it on we also are adding an argument here that's saying maximum equals 10,000 that's 10,000 megabytes or this is a 10 gigabyte virtual hard disk that we're creating here then we select the disk to make it the selected disk in the disk part utility so that all future commands that we give like attach vdisk then apply to this command and this attaches the virtual disk so that we can use it on our system so let's now jump over to our virtual machine and let's run these commands so I'm at an administrative or an elevated command prompt here in the background I have the computer management utility with disk management um, showing and I want you to see as I type these commands at the command line that the graphical interface will update automatically so I'll first of all start the disk part utility and now I have the disk part prompt and I can create a virtual disk and um, I give, give it file equals C colon backslash VH VHDs now that directory VHDs at the root of the C drive already exists I've created it if it's not there you do need to go out and create it and the name of the virtual hard disk file is my VHD VHD and I'm saying maximum equals 10,000 which is 10 gigabytes in size and now uh, disk part will create the disk for me and it doesn't take that long to do um, it's already halfway done once I've created the virtual disk I'm going to select it and by selecting it that means uh, future commands will be applied to this disk so I say select vdisk file equals c colon backslash vhds backslash my vhd dot vhd so now that disk has been selected and if I for example say attach vdisk because I've selected that disk disk part knows which virtual disk to attach to my system so notice here I've got disk one down here um, it's 10 gigabytes in size it hasn't been uh, initialized but uh, it is there and so you can see my command line is uh, showing up in the graphical interface for me I will now create a partition on that disk a primary partition and you can see that the partition is created in the graphical interface and I will sign it a letter V and so the, the V prompt shows up even the the prompt in the background to format the disk shows up but I will not uh, respond to that instead I will format it from the disk part utility I'll do a quick format label equals and I'll call it my VHD and the format begins I'll go over here to the graphical prompt and cancel that because I formatted it from the uh, from the disk part utility and so there it is 
and I've created that virtual hard disk I, in disk part. I can now exit. And if I want to do a DIR of V colon, that's the drive letter for that disk. Uh, there it is. It's empty. I haven't put anything on it yet, but I have managed to create that disk. Now, <clears throat> I've created it and I've partitioned it with the uh, all with the disk part utility. I use the create partition command, I assign a drive letter to it, and I forwarded it, and that disk, virtual hard disk is now out there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a Windows image to that virtual hard disk so we can store an operating system on it and then boot to it. And we will do that in the next video.